at times change. We change. And we are not the same person that we were before. If we are grown in our spirituality, something must be changing us. We cannot be the same Christian that we were the last week. We cannot be the same person that we were the last year. If we are Christian, something must be changed in our life. We must grow in our spirituality. So let me ask you a little survey today. Let me tell, uh, ask you four, a few questions before we go to the message today. And the first question is, do you wish to serve the Lord? Do you have a deep desire to serve the Lord? If your answer is yes, then let me ask you another question. <clears throat> have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized of the Holy Spirit? Because you cannot serve the Lord if you are not baptized by the Lord. If you are not baptized by the Spirit of the Lord. If you don't have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you say yes, I have received the Holy Spirit. And let me uh, ask you one more question before I, I explain you what it means, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit today? Or maybe not today, yesterday. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Now, what I mean with this, what are these two questions for those who haven't uh, taken a discipleship training or about the Bible study about the Holy Spirit? Let me explain to you briefly what means the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When one person receives Jesus as Lord and Savior of his life, her life, that person who has received Jesus has received also the Spirit of Jesus. Jesus died on the cross one forever, and he resurrected one forever in his life. And we... As we receive the Spirit of Jesus, we receive the Spirit one time and forever. That is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't die on the cross two times, three times, or every Easter week in the year. He didn't resurrect it also every year. He died and resurrected once in his life. And he paid for our sins once in his life on the cross. So when we accept Jesus' salvation, Jesus' life, we are receiving also Jesus' Spirit. We are receiving also Jesus' forgiveness. We are become a new person in Christ. We are called a, a new person. It's called a Christian. We are born again person. We are born again Christian. So Jesus uh, sacrifice on the cross and res Jesus resurrection on, on, on the dead from the dead on Easter Sunday affects us that now we can declare that our sins past, present and future are forgiven on the cross. And we have a new life in Christ because he resurrected from the dead for us. So that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are receiving the Spirit of Jesus. But what is this word? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be baptized, be filled. Are, what is the difference? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. According to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 13, the apostle Paul asks us to be wise in the way we live. Not like a drunkard or wine or alcohol, but a person who lives filled with the Holy Spirit. As a person who is drunk, he is out of his control. His emotions, his abilities overact. Why? Because he's under the control of alcohol. So he speaks in a different way. He acts in a different way. He believes that he's Superman, that he's one of the Avengers. He believes that he can speak Chinese, Korean, English, Arabian at the same time. He's multilingual. Well, he never learned those languages, but he, when he's under the control of alcohol, he can speak in public without any shame in his life. The same way, when we are under the control of the Holy Spirit, we boldly confess to God and in public about what we believe. We, believe. we have abilities that are not from us, that lead us the way to be bold and to also evangelize, are rich for people, serve, and change our character. That happens when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. But as the effect of alcohol disappears after 24 hours, if you can see any person who is drunk, you will know that the next morning when that person wake up from that drunkard, he or she now is again normal with no power, with no change at all in his life, if, except for the face that they just wake up and the smell of the alcohol that, you, that they bore for the last day. So the same happened when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. The effect of being filled with the Holy Spirit, the boldness that we have, the, the course that we have, the, the, the joy that we have, or even the sadness that we have because of sins of the world, sins of our own, disappear the next day. And we need, once again, to be under the control of the Holy Spirit. We need, uh, once again, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So these are the two differences about to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You understand? 
Amen? So, can you respond to these three questions? Do you want to serve the Lord? Do you receive the Holy Spirit? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? This is very crucial for us as Christians to live in this time of history, to live in this world. Now, let me continue with this survey and ask you one more question. How is your life without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? How can you evaluate your life at this time of your spiritual journey? How is your life without the Holy Spirit? And how is your life with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? In other words, did you notice the difference in this journey of your life, days when you were filled with the Holy Spirit and days when you were not filled with the Holy Spirit? That you feel that, yes, the Holy Spirit is with me and I'm Superman or Superwoman. Or you feel that you are empty, completely isolated, and you have nothing to do that day except to fall into temptations and go astray of the will of God. Then the next question is, do you need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Do you think that you need the Holy Spirit? Or, as I say the last week, if some theologian come today and make a public announcement and said that for many years of studying and researches and, 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 and meditation and prayer, they declare with the agreement of many theologians and doctors in theology that the teaching of the Trinity and the teaching that the Holy Spirit is the third person of God is a wrong or false teaching. And there is no such a thing as Holy Spirit, and there is no such a thing as the Holy Spirit. If someone say something like that, sadly, many Christians in this world will say, okay, nothing has changed. Okay, no problem. Because many Christians are living their life without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. They don't see the need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They don't see the need to have the Holy Spirit in their life. Therefore, they cannot serve God. They don't have purpose in their life. Like Rick Warren, his famous book, Purpose Driving Life, what in the, in the, why in the, uh, what is that question? Why in the world are you here in, in planet Earth? Why you are here in this time of history? Why you are here in this world today? What is the purpose of your life? What are you doing today with your life? What we are living for? Are we are here to just have a successful life, to have a successful living, and to just go to the cycle of life, to have family, a comfortable life, then leave to our kids some uh, inheritance that they can live when we, don't, we are not here, and then die? If we think that life is all about that, how miserable are we? That we have no purpose of living and instead living like animals. Let me introduce you some characters in the Bible who were filled with the Holy Spirit, and then we can understand what is my point today. People in the Old Testament were filled with the Holy Spirit. In Exodus, God chose Bezalel from the tribe of Judah, and he filled him with the Holy Spirit and with skill, abilities, and knowledge of all kinds of Christ in order to build the tabernacle of the Lord in the desert when they were coming out from Egypt for 40 years. One person was filled with the Holy Spirit to build a church, to build a temple of God, to build an altar for the Lord. One person had that skill and this skill was coming from God. This talent came from God. Another person, Joshua, says that he also was filled with the Holy Spirit because he became the leader of Israel after Moses. He was filled with the spirit of wisdom because the Holy Spirit can give you wisdom to become a good leader. And he was receiving the Holy Spirit as Moses laid his hand on him. Then Micah will say, Micah the prophet of the Old Testament says, But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might, to declare to Jacob his transgression, to Israel his sin. In other words, to preach the word of God. To tell others about their faults, their mistakes, their sins. God filled people with the Holy Spirit in order to expose the weakness of others. In Luke, John the Baptist, in his birth, his father said, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will fill it with the Holy Spirit even from his birth. In the Old Testament, this is called to be a Nazareth. The Nazarene had to be a person dedicated to the Lord, never cut his hair, and never drink alcohol like Samson. Samson also was filled with the Holy Spirit sometimes. Many people in the Old Testament was filled with the Holy Spirit sometimes. But in the Old Testament, those who were filled with the Holy Spirit, they were filled with the Holy Spirit temporarily, like I say, probably 24 hours only. 
And then the Holy Spirit disappeared on their life. The King Saul, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he prophesied. The prophet Samuel said, when you will fill it with the Holy Spirit, do whatever you want because the Lord is with you. And he did whatever he wants and the favor of the Lord was with him. But then, after that, he didn't look for the filling of the Holy Spirit and he did not the will of God. Again, instead, he do what is not the will of God. He disobeyed God. So being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that we all days of our life will be holy, holy, holy. Some days we will look a holy person and the other day we will be like a wicked one. So we need the Holy Spirit every day. But in the New Testament, the promise of the Holy Spirit is not to temporarily be with us, but be forever. Once again, when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, the, Lord, the Holy Spirit indwells in you and you became the temple of the Holy Spirit. So repeat after me, I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. But you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, that temple will be empty. And something else can come in, into it. Jesus said, when someone cleans his house, and take away from it all these demons, the house looks nice and clean. But if it's empty, then this demon who come out from this person will call seven other worse demons and make them dwell again in this person. And this person's stay will be worse than the previous one. If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit every day, you, as I say the last year, when we start the book of Revelation, you will become worse than a beast. Like King Nebuchadnezzar who don't acknowledge God, and who thought that everything that he had belongs to him because of his intellectual ability, because his capacity of make business and direct people and be a good leader, instead from the grace and wisdom and favor of God. He didn't give sense to God, and then he became a beast for seven years until God heard his prayer of repentance and restored his kingdom to him. We won't have the experience to know have the Holy Spirit in us. But we won't be sensitive to hear the Holy Spirit, to see His guidance in our life, because we are not aware of His presence in us, even though He is with us. It's as simple like this. God is here. I pray, God, you say, when two or three people are getting together, you are here in the midst of us. Do you feel that? No. Do I feel that? No. But we believe that, and that's why we are worshiping God in the Spirit and the truth. Amen? So, the same thing. The Holy Spirit is in you, but you don't feel it. You don't feel this in you until you ask in prayer and in meditation of God's word to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then you will be aware the Holy Spirit is with you. In the New Testament, Elizabeth, when he heard Mary, the mother of Jesus, greeting her, the baby that is John the Baptist, in his womb, he started to jump. And she was filled with the Holy Spirit as she experienced the presence of the Lord coming to her. In Luke chapter 167, Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Now in the book of Eds, as we are starting the book of Eds, the people of Israel were witnesses of what happened that Pentecost day. The disciples of Jesus, 120 persons in the attic, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And I'm sure that in that very day, 120 languages were spoken at the same time. And one of them was Korean and the other one was Spanish. Even though in those days never seek those, but I believe that. Because how many languages could I speak in that time? The 120 persons who were praying for the coming of the Holy Spirit, they all received different languages. And one of them was Spanish. I'm sure about that. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit in order to speak the wonders of God. In chapter 4, verse 31 of Acts, the Bible said that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spot the Word of God boldly. That's what we need today in church. We need people to speak boldly the word of God. But we are so ashamed of the gospel. But the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 1, 16, that we shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel. But because it's the power of God to preach salvation to the world. First to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. But the problem today in church is that we are so ashamed and we have no boldness to speak the word of God. Why? Because we are not filled with the Holy Spirit. When Ananias visited the Apostle Paul when he was still Saul, sent by God, the Holy Spirit, he went to baptize Paul, who was Saul. And he said this word, placing his hand on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you in the road as you were coming here has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. As Ananiah was sent it to Paul that very day, God sent me today to you to see him, to tell you that you were blind until today. You were away from God's will, but today you will see and you must receive the Holy Spirit. Somebody must say amen for that.
We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and in order to understand how the Holy Spirit works in us for our church, for seeing, we must study also the book of Acts. Because the book of Acts is not the Acts of the Apostles as it's entitled for many scholars, but is the Acts of the Spirit. It's the Acts of the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit Acts. This book of Acts is about the Holy Spirit. It's not about the disciples. It's about the word of the Holy Spirit. Started with the Holy Spirit and we finished with the Holy Spirit. The chapter 1 will tell us about the ministry of the Holy Spirit of patience. Chapter 2 spoke about preaching. Chapter 3 spoke about power. Chapter 4 will tell us about perseverance. This forcing we need to be aware as today, get out of this place, to know that now, at least I need patience in my life. Because you are a Christ in process. You are a person created in the image of God, created in God's likeness, but you are not like Jesus yet. The church have Jesus' DNA in order to look like Jesus, preach like Jesus, and serve like Jesus. But we don't have that yet until we feel, we feel it with the Holy Spirit. So what Jesus said to the church, pray and wait here until you receive power from above, and you will feel it with the Holy Spirit, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in Samaria, and Judea, and to the end of the world until you come to Korea and Japan. I doesn't say that, but that's my version. So we need the Holy Spirit. We need to receive the Holy Spirit and be patiently see how the Holy Spirit changed gradually our life into a new person. The life that we have before is not the same. The life that you have in 2017 shouldn't be the same this year, 2018. As I started with this question, you're the same person that you were the last week. Something has been growing in your spirituality this year. Something has been changed. Because what is the concept of time? What is time? As Rabbi Zachariah would define, time is the measure of changing. Time is the measure of changing. So how much time have you spent with the Holy Spirit? How long, how many years are you in Christianity? How many years do you believe in the Word of God? Then tell me, how much have you been changed? We need to receive this power and see how God is changing you into a new person and preach at the same time. Testify what we have experienced. This changing that is happening to you, you should tell to the world. You should tell to others what is going on in your life. If you don't have nothing to say to the world, you are not changing, you are not growing. You are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Something must be changed. Of course, you will go with these up and downs, up and downs in your life. I have experienced this in my 20 years in, in Christianity. I have these days that I feel, like, I feel that I can touch and reach heaven. But I, I, I was on those days that I feel miserable. I say, well, probably I never received the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I was, was as holy as the Apostle Paul preaching and healing and as Jesus prophesied into the war, but the next day I felt like I, I was Nebuchadnezzar, almost as a beast. So we need every day to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but we shouldn't give up. We should not give up because God is in war in us. He's working in every person. That's why we need His power and that's why we need to persevere. The perseverance of the saints. One of the teachings of John Calvin. Because we need to persevere in studying the Bible, obeying God's word, serving others, and preaching, and prophesying. Prophesying is not just foretelling people what they, what they have to do in the future, what will happen in the future. Foretelling, or prophesying, I mean, is to tell what God said in his words. To proclaim to his people what he promised for his church. That is prophesying. And in God's time, those prophecies, those promises will become true. As I said this year, 2018, we are more than conquerors. That's a prophecy. That's a prophecy. That's a come from my lips, come from the scripture. Not from 1 John chapter 5, 4, but comes from the book of Romans chapter 8. We are more than conquerors. But until we don't understand that, by the power and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, we are not living the winning life. We are not winning anything. So we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit in our life in order to serve the Lord, in order to form a church. Jesus is living among his people. The psalm says that God is living among the praises of his people. When we are getting together every Sunday here, we form church. And the church must have his character as received in the day of Pentecost Day. And the day of Pentecost Day, on the Pentecost Day, the church received the DNA of the Holy Spirit. And that's why today, 
As we form a church, we need to have the spiritual character of Jesus. And we need to have the international membership as a church and the gradual expansion of his kingdom. We need the Holy Spirit to indwell in us, to live in our church, to become the real church, the church that have the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the gospel can just visit us, but don't stay with us. So we need to realize what kind of church we are. A church that have the Holy Spirit at a church where God is not there. If you come to a church where the Holy Spirit is not there, I mean, you won't feel anything, but something in your mind, in your conscience, will lead you to recognize that you are living the life that God is pleased or not. If you have that evaluation in your heart, yes, the, Word Spirit is, the Holy Spirit is talking to you today. We need to be close with the Holy Spirit, to be witness to the end of the year. The same thing that Lord Jesus said before he ascended to, to heaven. In the Gospel of Jude, the Gospel of Luke, in 24, the Lord Jesus said, And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witness of these sins. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. Clothed with the Holy Spirit. Clothed with the Holy Spirit. Involved with the Holy Spirit. Empowered with the Holy Spirit. Enlightened with the Holy Spirit. Some people, they just put a temporal clause on their life. Thinking that this clause made me comfortable. I want to wear this because it made me happy. I want to wear this because it, it looks and makes good. Makes me elegant. But this clause is just, from our perspective, something that is outside of us. Not of us. No, I mean, knowing us. Some people, they think that the Holy Spirit is just an accessory. That you have it and you put it in it and then you take it off the next day. When you need it, you just put it on. When you don't need it, you just take it off. When you feel the hot or the temperature, oh, so hot, I'm going to take off this jacket. When you feel cold, you put it on, you need it. We treated the Holy Spirit in the, that way. When we feel that, oh, the embrace of this world is so hot that we don't need God, we are living our days in a hard way. We don't need the Holy Spirit. We take it out of the Holy Spirit. But when we are in need, we are in the cold days of our life, then we call the Holy Spirit again for help. Some people come to Christianity thinking that they will need the church temporarily for their needs. Some people come to church because they want to be healed. Some people want come to church because they, want, they think that they, if they become Christian, they want to be prosper. Some people think that they, they, they come, if they come to church, they will have more friends or they will get married. The motivation of those people is very selfish. It's personal. It's not about God. It's about themselves. They have the wrong motivation to come to church. To be a church is to be a member of the body of Christ. It's to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. You must know the Holy Spirit and live with the Holy Spirit. But the problem is when we invite someone to church, we give them the wrong gospel. We don't preach about sin and salvation. We say, if you come to ch our church, well, you're going to meet this person. We have this famous actor. We have this famous actresses. We have this celebrity. That celebrity. We have this person, this person. You will have this business, that business. Or God will bless you. You will prosper. Or God will heal you. And people come to church with wrong motivations. Not to know God, but to be healed, to be blessed. And then when they receive what they want, they leave the church. They go to another church or they change the religion. That is happening here in Korea. Why? Because they're looking for temporal satisfaction. No, for meeting a person. We are here to live by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. God's will for you is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But to live according to His will, it requires a training. It's a process. You need patience for that. Ephesians 5, 15, 18 says, Be careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which it leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to be a wise life? You need the Holy Spirit. You need the spirit of wisdom that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God will give you every day. But I don't try to manipulate you that say that you only receive wisdom here on Sunday. No. You need to receive this wisdom and this feel that of the Holy Spirit every day in your place, in your homes, in your business market place. There, wherever you are, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then you will serve the Lord there. You will serve the Lord here in church. And you will know 
who is God in your life. And you will experience the new life, the life of faith that will brought you to success. And then you will be more than conqueror. So I started this sermon with a question. I want to finish with another question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? The Apostle Paul asked the same question in the same book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 1 and 2. Saying that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul took a road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There, he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? They answered, No. We haven't not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. What did they hear? They just heard the Baptist that John the Baptist was preaching. And Apollos was teaching about that. But now Paul came and preached about the baptism of the Holy Spirit that comes from Jesus. And they received the Holy Spirit. Do you have the Holy Spirit with you today? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you want to serve the Lord? Do you need the dwelling of the Holy Spirit in your life today? Let me lead you with this prayer. Close your eyes, please. Bow your head and humbly present your heart to the Lord and souls. And say with me, Lord Jesus, until now, I didn't know about the Holy Spirit. But now I know that the Holy Spirit is your spirit. I want to receive your spirit. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make my heart your throne. Make my body your temple. And make me live the life that you want me to be. And became the person that you want me to be. I pray with thanksgiving. And I say I love you. And I pray all this in your name. Amen.